Hello YouTube. A lot of people believe in the magical power of stones and it is no coincidence, coincidence that stones including in jewelry are often selected not only for a person's appearance but some people believe for example for the zodiac sign. Um, I'm sure we have heard at least one legend about the cursed jewels and um, this power of stones. Um, I ha have presented information in my other videos. It's very interesting and uh, I like to study uh, this and uh, I told you about the carnelian and the really truly I don't want to say magical, I should say powerful uh, emanescence that it has and its healing effects and this is not hearsay, this is very interesting and confirmed by history, legends and actual experiences. But today I want to speak about another stone. Well, there is a treasure in the Kremlin and it's enveloped in legends. The Caesar ruby is a piece of jewelry in the form of, as some people describe, a bunch of grapes uh, with a golden with golden leaves and tendrils and it's stored in the diamond fund of the Moscow Kremlin. The size of this stone is 4 by 2.7 by 2.3 centimeters. The weight is 255.75 carats. In fact, this is not a ruby, but a red tourmaline, presumably mined in Burma. Well, in the history, this stone went down under the name of Caesar's ruby. According to legends, the Egyptian queen Cleopatra gave it to her lover, Julius Caesar. Born of Chaldean demon, the stone endowed its owner with amazing powers the ability to penetrate into the very essence of things and even see through walls throughout his life. Caesar did not part with the gift, believing that he owed his victories in war and politics to this stone. However, the magic power could not save Caesar from the betrayal of his close friend Brutus. After Caesar's death, the stone passed into the hands of Charlemagne, being a fearless conqueror, Charlemagne created a powerful empire in Western Europe and received a well-deserved title of ruler. But the story of this stone doesn't end there. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the stone ended up uh, in the hands of Charlemagne, as I said, but I, by unknown means. It passed into the treasury of the Templar Order, Knights Templar. Rumors spread that the adepts of the Order had comprehended the mystical secret of the stone and learned to control its power. After it belonged to the Templars, and af, you know, af, then it went to the Jesuits. Apparently, they gave it to King Charles the ninth after the Saint Bartholomew's night or massacre and Charles IX is, IX is the first reliable owner of the Caesar's ruby. After the death in 5074 of the French king, while well, the first recorded owner of the stone, his widow Elizabeth of Austria presented the ruby to her brother who became King Rudolf of King Rudolf II, so to say, of Germany and Bohemia. King Rudolf allowed the famous mineralogist of the 16th century by the name of Anselm de Bou, the founder of modern European mineralogy. He was allowed to examine and describe the wonderful stone. It was this de Bou who named the outstanding stone Caesaris Rubinus, that is the imperial ruby. Well, the ruby was kept in the royal treasury in Bohemia, in Prague, where it was captured along with the entire treasury of King Rudolf II in 1648 by the Swedes during the Thirty Years' War. The Swedish commander presented the stone to the crown princess of Sweden, and after her death, 
the ruby was included in the crown jewels. Rudolf II begged his sister to give him the red stone. Legends about the mystical power of the Caesar stone have long spread throughout Europe. Well, in gratitude for the gift, the brother promised his sister to convert to Catholicism the population of Austria and the Czech Republic and the um, area of the today's Czech Republic, where Protestants have strengthened. But the red stone turned out to be beyond his control. Well, religious persecution of Protestants shook the power of Rudolf II and um, in May of 1611 the king abdicated and died a year later at the age of 59 and as I said in 1648 the Swedes they captured Prague and the Caesar stone was taken as a gift to Queen Christina of Sweden well there is a guide uh, of the Stockholm, Stockholm royal palace who tells an unusual tale it's actually an unusual look for the uh, the reason for Queen Christina's abdication from the throne. Christina inherited the crown at the age of six. The re regents were preparing the girl for the reign, so their bringing was very tough. Christina began, began to take part in state affairs and intrigues at the age of 15. Since childhood, tired of the burden of duties, Christina abdicated at the age of 28 and in 1654 and she went to Italy. Christina got also tired of the religious Protestant upbringing and she converted to Catholicism. As the guide noted, this is a clear example that children should not be imposed on their ambitions by us. Nothing good will come of it. Well, during the hundred years that the ruby was kept in the Swedish royal treasury, they tried to bring it to mind, so to say, to bring it to the right shape several times, polished it and had plans to make a cut. An order was even given to a jeweler who planned how to best to preserve the unique stone and made a model out of glass. And in general, the ruby was almost sold to finance another war, but fortunately it didn't come to cutting or selling. And again, we call it ruby, but really it's not a ruby. The Swiss knew uh, the former owner of the stone called it Caesar's ruby, and it was under this name in 1777 that the Swedish king Gustav III presented it to the Russian Empress Catherine II accompanied by the legend of Cleopatra and Charlemagne. On the 15th anniversary of the reign of Catherine the Great, that's when King Gustav, who was a cousin of the Empress, came to visit her. His father, King Adolf Frederick, was the brother of Catherine's mother. Very interesting details. It's like uh, almost um, a historic, uh, historical mystery. Anyway, Gustav hoped to get close to an influential older cousin and ask her for protection to marry one of her nieces. I don't think it ever happened. But as a sign of friendship, Ekaterina presented the Swedish guest with her cane decorated with a large diamond and a diamond braid. Now it was the turn of the Swedish king to give something proportionate in response. Gustav decided to give Catherine a very large ruby, which was part of the crown jewels of Sweden and was kept during his departure in Stockholm. Well, according to the Swedish law of the 18th century, the regalia did not belong to the king himself and he could not single-handedly dispose of the jewels of the Swedish crown. To make such a gift to Catherine or Ekaterina, Gustav needed the permission of the Swedish Riksdag parliament. Uh, and there was no time for it. Most likely Gustav would have received the stone legally, but he still made the donation in secret. After returning to Stockholm, he sent the ruby to the Empress Yekaterina by courier, and he had already agreed with the par parliament retroactively, in fact. Well, Catherine did not want to spoil such a famous stone with a cut, having ordered to polish it and make a pendant. At first it was stored in St. Petersburg and during the First World War it moved to the Kremlin where it's still kept. Look, I'm very 
happy that not all the things were lost during the bloody revolutions and takeovers and everything on the civil war because some of the very interesting ancient Egyptian papyri got lost but that's a subject for another video the pendant was called Caesar's ruby until the uh, Russian Revolution and communist takeover after which the stone was studied by professor mineralogist academician Alexander Firstman I mentioned him in my other videos about interesting discoveries in Russia he found out by comparing the size and weight of the stone that it was definitely not a ruby Firstman's publication where he described the stone as a ruby light a rare and very valuable variety of tourmaline it caused a surprise in Sweden which was following the fate of its long-standing gift the Swedes even put forward a hypothesis that the stone was replaced but there were old measurements of the size and weight of tourmaline made under the Catherine which confirmed that it was still <coughs> excuse me the same Caesar Zuby those who saw it in the Kremlin say that it looks much more like a raspberry like a berry than a bunch of grapes um, I like this part that the legend about the legend that the stone has amazing powers the ability to penetrate into the very essence of things and even see through walls well the stone is kept in the Kremlin I wonder would the Soviet leaders try to use its powers I'm sure they heard about the legends and if so would they be able to find a way to unleash them I do not think so but you see the science makes advances as the time passes by and what was not possible in the 1930s 1950s let's say 1970s is possible most likely in the 21st century and why would a leader of a great nation not use such powers do you think his counterparts in other nations would hesitate think about it interestingly other legends say that this stone has magical properties and helps bring fame and fortune to its owners I do not know more than what I have told you but the Kremlin has many secrets that are part of the Russian history stories of hidden treasures libraries underground tunnels and much more and I hope to bring you some of those stories and legends I uh, thank you for um, your attention to my work if you can support my research please find the links in the description to this video please subscribe and tell others thank you